Halloween. That's Hello, it. Clive. Is this camp enough for you? That is that is pretty pretty camp. Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Who were you channeling there? Was it? Uh, I have no particular? idea. <laughs> yeah. Not. Not. Sounded sure. like uh, any random uh, TV horror host with their ball as a device. <laughs> Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Vincent Price having his nuts squeezed. Vincent um, Price balls in a vice. There we go. <laughs> yeah, there, there we go. Like the old nursery good... rhyme books. <laughs> <laughs> We're off to a crack and start. Right. For this right. Halloween special. Yeah, so, so uh, what, what are we doing here today, Clyde? What, what show is this even? Uh, this is uh, Literary as Fact. Yes, I think so. Ah, yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. And uh, yeah, we're talking a couple of horrific books for Halloween. And um, so uh, I so the, uh, I chose uh, these two books. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Hold on. Okay, I've got them on Kindle right. form. Uh, the Villa and the Vortex, Supernatural Stories 1916-1924 by Eleanor Modan. Mm-hmm. And From the Abyss, Weird Fiction, 1907 to 1945 by D.K. Broster. Mm-hmm. And uh, I didn't know either of these authors previously. Yeah, I was going to ask how you even uh, came across them because I hadn't heard of either of them either. Well, this was a, a bit of a, a random pick. So I was, I was reading a recent edition of the London Review of Books and one of the ads in it was for actually not these two. I think it was Villa in the Vortex and another book from this uh, handheld press. Mm-hmm. And the other book was a compilation of like weird fiction as well. But when I looked, I was initially going to do the Villa in the Vortex and that, but then I looked into and the listing for that um, book had some short stories which were the, the kind of things that you would find in some other anthologies maybe mm-hmm. um uh, some more familiar authors but then while looking around the handheld press um you know looking around their website i i came across this as well and it sounded kind of interesting so i thought okay why not uh yeah why not um i just had a feeling, mm-hmm. a feeling uh okay. which i think turned out to be mostly kind of correct where i had mm-hmm. a feeling that this was you have this ad in the London Review of Books for this kind of small press, but it's the weird. So I'm thinking, yeah, I'm thinking. I, my guess was this is going to be weird fiction, leaning more towards the literary kind of Mr. James mm-hmm. kind of yes side of things, um, mm-hmm. and not quite there because well, Mr. James. I mean, that's a high. Yeah. I mean, the collected short stories of Mr. James is one of the the finest, you know, books of of supernatural fiction mm-hmm. that you could ever possibly read, right? And um, yeah, I love, I love, I love, I love all that. But yeah, m- closer to that tradition, maybe a little bit more than something that you would find in uh, those pan book of horror stories or something like that. Which are yes, yeah. more weird tales, pulpy kind of. Um, I mean, all good stuff, but. Mm-hmm. This is mo- bending more towards the other way, I think. Uh, both of them. Yeah. Uh, which one of these do you want to tackle first? Because one of them you haven't actually read all the way through, right? No, there's one I've read 70% of, and there's one that I've read all of. So maybe if we could start with From the Abyss. Um, and to be honest, of the two of them, that's I enjoyed them both, but that's the one I enjoyed slightly less. Um, the one that I'm still reading um, is uh, the other one. And that's that that one. Well, we'll we'll get into it here in a moment. But anyway, sorry, um, I was letting the cat out. No, absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, it's a it's a spooky time, so um, you know, having a familiar there with you, um, you know, mm. it's important. Mm-hmm. Uh, um, yeah. So maybe we'll do from the abyss first. Okay. Um, well, yes. Uh, DK Poster. That's DK. Yeah. So, so what can you tell us anything about DK before we? So both of these books are written by women. So that was interesting to me because I have to admit that's uh, like other than some 
some Anne Rice that I probably read when I was like 18 years old. I don't know that I've really read much or any horror or supernatural kind of fiction written by women. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I mean, like there may be bits and pieces, but I just don't, I can't think of, of you know. There are, I mean, there's short, I mean, you probably don't remember necessarily, but if you. Oh, and Frankenstein, but that goes way yeah. back. If you did read, if you did read those pan book of horror stories collections and stuff growing up, you know, there's there's female authors in there as well. Okay. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah, DK Borster. Not much, not much of no, is known about her as, far as I know. She was a bit of a recluse, and she seems okay. to be most famous for um, a, a trilogy of books she wrote in the twenties called the Jacobite trilogy. Um, okay. Scottish history. Uh, the Flight of the Heron, The Gleam in the North, and The Dark Mile, apparently quite well regarded. Um, uh, the Flight of the Heron was turned into a TV series as well, I think, at some point. Um, okay. Even twice. So she is known in some circles for certain things, but not necessarily for her weird fiction, right? Mm -hmm. um, and this isn't all of it, but some of it is collected. Uh, how many stories are there? Is it 11? I think? Yes, 11 stories going all the way from, from 1907 to the mid 40s. Um, so, you know, they, they span a pretty good mm -hmm. time. And uh, I suppose, hey, let's jump into this. Let's do the stories, I suppose. I mean, yeah. let's put it this way. I mean, we don't have necessarily have to do every single story. Um, how about what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to mention the ones that I have found interesting. Sure. And then if you've got other ones that you want to mm -hmm. add to the pile, we can do that. How about that? Oh, yeah. Perfect. So, so we skip over All Souls Day from 1907. Uh, second yep. one in this collection, Fil de Emigre. Yep. Which I'm probably pronouncing wrong from 1913. Um, and, 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 yeah, so this is a... This is an, I don't know, a kind of, I, I, I don't think I've ever read a, a kind of, I don't, I don't know what kind of story, what kind of story is this? It's not really a ghost story. It's a, it's a story psychic of experience. audience. Yeah, yeah, clairvoyant or psychic experience kind of a, a thing. And it's, it's not, I mean, because some of the, some of the stories in here are actually quite creepy, but this isn't creepy and it's not trying to creep you out. It's more of a, it's kind of an uplifting story. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Of a, uh, of a love between a, a father and son, right? Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. I, I, I don't know. This threw me a little bit because it's. I I wasn't quite sure. I mean, I suppose it works in in what it's doing, but it's I I, I wasn't expecting this. Mm -hmm. What well, what did you write? Right. It's because it's basically and it's set in in I think it's that period. It's 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 um very early nineteenth century or late eighteenth century, right? And and just post French Revolution, yeah. Going back, some some French with the help of the British going back to France is like a attempt at a counter revolutionary strike, hmm. and 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 yeah, a dying soldier on the beach and his connection. With, with his, his yeah his son. son and he's uh, contemplating suicide in this moment and then has yeah. this yeah has this connection with his son and yeah i mean it was yeah it was sweet but it was as you said it was more it was more a weird tale than a a horror tale yeah a bit of a dead zone kind of vibe to it a little bit but mm -hmm. uh, a positive <laughs> right. Yeah. Yes. The live zone, I guess. Um, <laughs> uh huh. I mean, I have to say, the first three story, actually, the first two stories in this didn't really grab me as much. And in fact, it wasn't until the fourth story, the fourth story, more than anything else, that I was like, "Oh yeah, this is what I've been Started waiting get... for." Yes. Um, yeah. So we we'll skip over the window as well from ninety. But uh, I will say the window was funny just because there's this like there was a there was a bit of shades of like Edgar Allan Poe in that one for me. Just that, like in that, like cask of Amontillado, or that kind of that idea of like being trapped and not knowing if you're going to live or die, and and just and the weirdness of it basically being a, a haunted like um, living room. That's well, there's like... a lot of 
there's a lot of odd haunted spaces and objects in this book, like, um, mm -hmm. but in a way that you don't really necessarily ex expect. I, I mean, I think that's why I'm guessing that's why these two, both of these books actually were collected. Obviously, someone um, had a good eye. Well, maybe this Melissa Edmonds and I do rise to four words and mm -hmm. had a good eye for um, picking out writers who 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 kind of strayed a little bit from i mean the, the the both of these collections are oddities in their field i would say mm -hmm. like a, they go a little bit askew somewhere that you they these stories don't normally do and and, and in a good way i think mm -hmm. yeah yeah uh, that one was it was interesting too because it's also like that one's where somebody is paying for the sins of their ancestors R right, um, right. Which you know, so the the house yeah. the house has it in for them. The house is like, fuck you, uh, you you piece of shit. Even though it's not your fault exactly, it's something your ancestors did, and I'm gonna trap you here. And yes, and, yeah, it's it's a bit stone tape as well, right? And it, like, there's, yes. like there's a piece of land or that is recorded. Yeah, yeah, it's like tr like a trauma on the landscape that demands yes. some kind of blood sacrifice or something yeah, like that yeah 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 it's always yeah i thought it was a cool premise um but it wasn't until the clairvoyant which is the the fourth story that um, i was like yes yeah here we go. Here we yes it's got some of your favorite things in it right it's got it has a bunch of yeah. my favorite things in it yeah. yes so what's this about then nick um so it starts with an aussie couple who are looking at uh buying a house and they um the wife gets this very bad feeling when she's in there that like something terrible has happened and that the real estate agents are not giving them the full picture so they kind of leave um and then it turns out that some years previous there was a little clairvoyant girl who became possessed by the spirit of a samurai and hacked a bunch of people to pieces um yeah including like uh children left at the bottom of swimming pools and stuff i just remember it suddenly was like we had gone from very goreless, very kind of cerebral horror to suddenly a much more like visceral and like, yeah, child murdering, samurai possession. It was great. I was like, yeah. What What's that film where... Ninja you know, 3 The Domination, I think, is what you're thinking of. <laughs> oh, there's that, uh, which, is, which is, I love that. No, there's that other one, which isn't quite as good. The one Susan George and her husband go to Kyoto and by like a haunted house. Um, oh, I don't think I've seen that. The house where evil dwells, or something like that. Yeah, uh, I don't think it's very good, but uh, mm. yeah. Uh, but no, this one's. I mean, it's a bit, in a way, oddly enough, this is a bit more kind of plays out a a bit more like what you would expect. Yes. Um, a bit more Shaggy Dog story twist kind yeah. of thing. But yeah, but it's it's short and it's fun, mm -hmm. and obviously and people you, die. Yeah, well, do you I give think that so was, have done homework in terms of, um, you know, she actually looked up stuff about Japanese swords as well. Like, yes, like, yes. I actually learned something. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah. I mean, there is the famous, the, what, the Masamune blade. You know, there are some famous cursed swords in Japanese right. history, mythology, whatever you want to call it, the mashup. But, um and so yeah, I don't know. It just it it worked. This worked for me. Yeah. And there wasn't there hadn't there hadn't been a body count up until this point in any of the stories. I was like, are we gonna get any anybody's that gonna die in these ghost right, stories? Yeah, this, brought stories? The, this brought the guy in Smith, right? You yeah, know? it went suddenly way out beyond where I thought. So yeah, I was You can imagine Guy and Smith extrapolated a full novel out of it called Oh yeah Samurai Massacre or something like that. Or... Yes, <laughs> yes, yeah. Um, yeah, so that one that one was good, and then I I really like the next one as well, the one about the two yes. spinster, the, the two spinster land. land. Yeah, um, I don't know if you want to speak to this. Nineteen thirty two again. Nineteen thirty two seems to have nineteen thirty three seems to be a, a bit of a banner year here for mm -hmm. uh, for DK Boster. No, I really like this one as well. This uh, might be one of my favorites. In this collection, actually, mm -hmm. um, I would think so too. Yeah, because yeah. So the interesting thing about this one is it's it 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 it, it kind of leads you in the direction you think it's in. Like um, I don't know it it kind of drifts into proto talented Mister Ripley territory a little bit. Mm -hmm. 
and then kind of in a quite a clever way kind of turns in on itself and without it's not a twist exactly because it doesn't change it's torn it's like one of those stories that's wrong footed you from the beginning and you yes, only realize yeah. once you get to the yeah. end like Agreed. Ah, I, that's which no real... the, the victim becomes the monster but, thing but, I but thought there's no twist effective. there's no like big reveal no no and it's written no, in exactly it the same in the tone yeah yeah. It's just, it's like it's a different perspective or something on something at this, and, and it's really well done. And, and again, there's no like, no twist necessary. It's just, but by good the time get to that last sentence, you're like, ah, oh, yeah, that was <laughs> yes. a deeply yeah. satisfying mm -hmm. kind of. And quite, quite dark, but yeah. it, 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 which I appreciated too. It was, it's again, it was the second story in a row where I was like, oh yeah, now she's going for it. Now she's not afraid to. <laughs> to let people die in horrible ways and to then let other people stew in their bad choices. And uh, yeah, no, it was very effective um, and quite sad. Yeah, very in, sad. In that too, it's quite a sad story as well as being What's a, a it's good. A, it's a story about someone with mental illness, right? Uh, yes, yes. And two people who, and yeah, and just a relationship that's gone kind of toxic. Um, but Yeah, and, and ultimately someone... Uh, you know, a someone who's actually, you know, in retrospect, has has has, uh, um, you know, curtailed their own life ambitions to help someone else, um, and not get yeah. attacked for it at all. Uh, no, almost being made the villain of the piece. Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, and you can't help but identify at the beginning with the the henpecked, you know. Absolutely. Um, lady and then yeah and as i said it very subtly over the, the thing yeah this other picture emerges and yeah it was really well done I yeah thought. this would be a good you can imagine this one being cherry picked for like an anthology yes you know, or, or you know not not this single author but you know just like a, a anthology with different authors of um how to do could, this kind of story very well right and very concise i think it could make a, a really good you know, made for TV episode of something as well, like a like an anthology TV series. I think it could be a few of these. A few of these. I even went okay. on the IMDb to check out if there were some obscure. Uh, you know, but no, the only thing to give Broster has been um, adapted for were the uh, the adoption of those Jacobite the novels. Books. Okay. So, yeah, I thought so. Well. I thought maybe one of them had maybe become an episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents mm -hmm. or Spence. Yeah. Or but no, it seems to be they, they, well. I, I mean, I don't know, but I'm guessing until these two books, the uh, you know, there may be a little bit of a well kept secret, and I don't know how well distributed the you know handheld press is. I mean, there's a good chance right. it might remain, um, you know. Uh, yeah, an undiscovered gem. Yeah. Um, and yeah, unless of course you listen to this awesome pod uh, YouTube video even and watch it. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, proving our worth. <laughs> um, the pestering, great title. by Guy N. Smith. I no, believe. no, no. Oh, That's sorry. That's, this is not about boils. No. This is not about boils at all. No. Okay. All right. The pestering is a great title. It is a good title. Yes. Because it's a really nice kind of. Yeah, I. Yeah, I don't know if it's an odd. It's an odd little good. tale. Yeah, and genuinely unnerving and creepy in moments. Mm -hmm. Like uh, again, yes. watching this, I was thinking, if someone did this well, this would make for a really creepy film. Right? Yes, yeah. I mean, at the beginning, it's very hard to tell if this person is is a, is a ghost or a manifestation, or if they're just a person, mm. because that's part of the play of the, the beginning story is that the husband and wife who, because this part, this this. It's like he's an older person, but sometimes not, right? Sometimes a younger person who shows up continually trying to get into their house, and he, yeah. he needs to be invited in. Um, and yeah, as it turns out, he is in fact a, not a living person. Well, um, it's always fascinating to me as well. Is uh, we were talking earlier about the like Emma James thing. In, in so now we think of you know the stories from this era as as antiquated, right? And mm -hmm. 
And it's always interesting to me, for instance, reading this or when you read an M.R. James story, is when in their time period, they talk about things yes. in older. That kind of yep. double frame of reference to me is that historiography is always kind of fascinating, right? Because we just think, yes. of, oh, there's now an old stuff, you know. And yes. Then, and then yes. you read some old stuff about them talking about old stuff. Old stuff. Right? Yes. So yeah. It's always I mean, kind of fascinating to me for some reason. And I mean, you know, well, I always think of Lovecraft in that way of like he'll he'll describe kind of a character digging down, and then they'll get to like the Roman foundations, and then they'll get to something beneath that, and then oh my god, what's this thing beneath even that? Right. This idea of like the layers of history as they exist in like the physical world as well as in this kind of yeah. Yeah, so that's the same realm. here, but it, it it wears it very lightly, right? It doesn't go it doesn't go heavyweight either Lovecraft or Emma James. Yeah, but but it, it's there. It's worn lightly, but it's 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 there, and it and it gives you an extra sh shiver, right? It gives you that kind of um, mm -hmm. like Werner Herzog said something along the lines of um, if you imagine the entirety of like human history as a very, very, very thin layer of ice over a big, deep, dark lake, right? Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. So there's that in there, uh, mm -hmm. which I always appreciate. I, I always like a bit of cosmic, even if it's, in fact, oh, even yeah. if it's even more so if it's hinted at, in a way. Yes. Because right? um, otherwise, this is fairly uh, more of a domestic horror mm -hmm. in a way. It's, a, it's about yes. guarding a home against an invasion. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. And there is, there is a, I mean, it turns out that there is a bit of a black magic thing, but that 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 predates all of this, and this is kind of why he's, you know, he's done something bad, and again, he needs to make it right. Um, and that's why he's kind of hassling them. Well, yeah, it's, a, it's effective. And then I really like the next one. Yeah, uh, yeah again, and, and there's a bit of that here as well. Um, there's a bit of that, but this one this it's interesting how they all play. Like so, like we said, this is look, you're saying Claire, Claire Wines plays out a little bit more the way you expect. Promised Land is a bit more, I don't know, it, it's, it's a totally surprise. different thing. And then yeah, and then the pestering is taps into all those things, but is something else. And then yeah, this one is starts off with that kind of feeling of tapping into that something ancient that you don't understand but then mm -hmm. at the end is a real weird tales kind of pulpy kind oh of yes yes ending, right? what i also yeah what i liked about this was was i wondered if this was partly inspired by some real people um there's a relationship at the central to the story about an older sort of dissipated um writer you know, uh, who to me read like some sort of Oscar Wilde meets Aleister Crowley. There's right? something very Dorian Gray about this story. Yeah. As well. Yeah. So, because uh, you know, in the case of uh, the case of both of them, but especially in the case of Oliver Wilde, oh uh, sorry, Oscar Wilde, he had a relationship with um, oh shit, what's the illustrator uh, that illustrated some of his stuff? Uh, Aubrey Beardsley. Oh, okay. Much, right. A much younger, younger man who created these kind of like sexually themed drawings at the time, and then apparently died quite young and felt really guilty and asked for it all, all to be destroyed. He was very like, you know, he felt like he just, he he wasn't going to go to heaven because he'd drawn all these sexy drawings and he was always very sickly. But there was something about this relationship between the two of them and and him at the beginning idolizing this debauched older writer, and then and then being lured into making uh you know choices that were yeah take note uh, this, take note nick i've seen those sexy drawings you're not going to heaven yes well that's fine i wasn't expecting to um <laughs> but yeah so that uh that um no but yeah, so what i like about counting at the doors and we're deliberately being vague because all these stories rest on i mean i don't really want because the thing is the plot synopsis is the setups, because uh, they're short stories, they, they're set up pretty quickly if you read them. And then beyond that, you want to spoil anything. So you almost don't want to talk about the content. The details, of the, so, yeah. I will say that the two hauntings that are central to this are two of the weirdest and coolest. Like the thing that's haunting the older debauched artist is really strange. 
right? Well, it's totally. I mean, it's your Im, your imagination is allowed to totally run riot with that one, right? You have not. Yeah. What the fuck's he done? Like what <laughs> has he done? Right? Yeah, yeah. To create this thing. That's yeah. that's that keeps showing up and nuzzling him as well, and then yeah, the, and then the, the, yeah, the more it nuzzles, that's the thing because it starts off, it's creepy enough already, just some like random bit of fluff or like some furry thing, and, and yeah, that when it's like, I found it in the bed with me, getting my warmth, you know, it's like yeah, yeah, it's creepy, but the but the thing that haunts the so he basically, you know, he sends the younger guy off in a way, thinking well if he. If he makes the same kind of deal, maybe I can get this thing off my back. And he, the thing that haunts him is really, well, that's really what strange. Is. Yeah, that's like, yeah. truly a beautiful image. Like I was really haunted by the the sight. I could see myself walking down the streets of Tokyo at night, and also this secondary overlapping, right? You know, right. image that's shrinking. Yeah, just I was like, that's fantastic. It's an then, amazing. And then just and again, then that's not you get the. You proper get a horror creature feature, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, again, a little bit like like Lovecraft chucking in something right at the very end, right? Yes. Um, yeah, no, I, I I enjoyed this story a great deal. It was one of the ones I was quite upset when it ended because I was really enjoying yeah. reading it. Um, mm -hmm. Couching at the door is such a great title. So like, I like I have no idea what it actually means. Really, no, nope. no, nope. uh, like, uh, yeah, yeah. And I, the next, the one after it, Juggernaut, mm. Unenjoyed too. Um, this is slightly different again. This is a this is a haunted bath chair story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, so are, is a bath chair basically like a rickshaw, like a an English version of a rickshaw? Yeah, kind of. Yeah, I'm I picture, that would be the I'm Kind of dragging this, yes, this rickshaw around town in the rain all the time. To you nowadays. You you you're just imagining like a walk-in bath kind of thing for people. Yeah, like, pretty much. Because, yeah. Um, but no, and so this is interesting. So what I like about both these books as well is they have glossaries at the back. Yes, which is helpful. And, and there's quite a few ar archaic terms in there. Yeah. So did you know? I actually didn't know this. I, I, you know, I use the term juggernaut. But mm -hmm. did you actually know the etymology behind this? I didn't know this until I looked this up. Uh, no, I don't think so. The anglis is very specific. The anglicized term for a large wheeled chariot designed to carry a Hindu deity in state among their people. Mean, so yeah, basically how we usually use it now, meaning a large and unstoppable object in motion. But it's interesting, wow. I never thought Juggernaut, number one, I didn't think it came from another language, but also that it's specifically a chariot designed to carry a Hindu deity. You know, it's funny because if you had asked me, I, w I had always assumed it was a German word or had Germanic roots. It sounds to me like juggernaut. Sounds uh, German. Juggernacht. <laughs> yeah. Knight of huh. the Jugger. Is that a thing? That's a thing, isn't it? Uh, it could be. <laughs> um, um, but, but whenever I think juggernaut, I just think of, I don't know if you've ever seen, uh, it, it's a really good disaster film by Richard Lester. Have you ever seen Juggernaut? No. No, it's it's, no. It, it's it's the most British disaster film imaginable. Okay. It's basically put a bomb on a like a ferry and and but the person in charge of like uh amusements on the ferry is um ah uh, ah uh, fuck what's his name uh you know Veruca Salt's dad um, oh yeah 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 and you know what's funny before <laughs> you even said that I was picturing him which is really strange Roy Kinnear yeah. Roy Kinnear Roy Kinnear yeah yeah, yeah. whose son um, is now a, a good actor as well right um Am I wrong in thinking did he die on the set of a Richard Lester film? He did. Uh, one of the three Musketeer sequels. Yeah, right? one of the later. Yeah, I okay. love Roy Kinnear, and and uh, so do I. And no one quite like he's perfect. Juggernaut, you know, because you know, if you had an American film set in a cruise like that, it would be glamorous and the Juggernaut. Oh yeah, yeah. No, I assume the team is and, Oh, we'll <laughs> yeah. is, but weather's too bad for that. We'll go inside and have some tea. <laughs> And yeah, it's a great film. Juggernaut is a good one. I okay, I will it. put that on the list to get to. For sure. <laughs> and Richard um, Harris. So there we go. Um, so yeah, this one, this one's another sad one in a way, and also it is. like it's it is. it's more of a it's more of a character sketch of really of mental illness. I don't it think is, there really yeah. is there isn't necessarily a supernatural element other than the one he's carrying with him through his own projection of his well, that's of why his guilt. 
that's what I thought was interesting. And bo both of these collections, in a way, are connected, I think, because a lot of the stories, and I really appreciate this, I, I like that a lot of them do deal in how much of a haunting is actually a haunting and how much of it is some kind of projection of something going on inside someone's head. Yes. Right. Yes. True. Yeah, yeah, you're right. It's it's some of them play and I quite like that. I like that liminal not knowing space that a few of the stories create where is there an element of black magic or the supernatural or is it right. just entirely right. somebody's mental breakdown? And also what I really like about this one as well is there's no real bad villain, right? Like everyone's just oh no oh, man. Oh that's so yes, sad yeah. and tragic and yeah, uh, yeah. The old fella, and it's even then. Like, I mean, he makes he makes a choice that is, you know, leads to something else had bad happening to somebody else. But it's really not clear that he really didn't honestly believe that that wasn't going to be that big a deal. Yeah, you know, like, yeah. like, because because then he because because then they go into later on that he, he spent a lot of time looking in medical textbooks. And he was like, oh, <laughs> oh, maybe it was a big yeah. deal. No, no, I, 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 I honestly felt quite sorry for 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 the little old man, especially since the victim seemed like such a battle yes. as well pleasant person yeah yeah, yeah. Um, um no again but just yeah it's interesting another you know so far we've had let's say so far we've had say three or four definite winners mm -hmm. and they all have a slightly different tone Yes, okay. and that's remarkable if you think about it. All from one person has mm -hmm. delivered at least three or four really good examples that you could anthologize of three or four different ways of doing yeah. something. Mm -hmm. Agree. So, yeah, um, the pavement from nineteen thirty-eight. Yeah, that's, a, that's um, an odd one. Yeah, again, not as satisfying. No, because I don't no. quite. I, 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 I'm not sure if I quite get a handle on what this is trying to do. Basically, this is about a woman obsessed with um, a Roman floor. Yeah, a Roman her. floor which has been discovered on their property, and they've got it under like a shed. Yeah. And they're in a farm somewhere. Yeah. yeah, and and she gives two words of it, and she's very, she's mm -hmm. well read. She's 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 an autodidact who's read up on it, and she can speak yeah. of it. But it's threatened it's by. But yeah. I mean, she's kind of, and she's made friends with the characters who are depicted in the well, whatever it is. In, in the... One woman, right? Um, yes. Yeah. So she's obviously quite lonely, in a way, and this is yeah. kind of a reason. This is a reason to be. It brings people in. They're making money, and it gives her a reason to to get up in the morning. And but and I yes, and then the reason it's strange is because her relationship, like. Sometimes you play this kind of thing and it's, even if it's really outlandish, like what would be a good example? Um, Willard, for example. Yep, like, yep. Someone hanging out to the rats um, or whatever the book, it's Ratman's Notebook or something. I've not mm -hmm. actually read the source. No. Actually, that's one for literature. So have you ever read yes. that? No, no, have not. Do that. Um, but, it, you know, you, you often have a sympathy, but this story doesn't seem to, I don't think we're engender any of that. No, no, you just think she's a she's vindictive, yeah. angry lady. Yeah, kind so, of. so, so when the ending comes, and, and you're like, Yeah, there's no sense of sense. yes, you just think, <laughs> Yeah, no, you've just you've not only are you a head kiss, but you've yeah. deprived you've destroyed some valuable history. Yeah, you, yeah. Fuck. you fucking <laughs> asshole. This is a story about a fucking asshole. <laughs> Yeah. Change. yeah, I'm actually I'm doing it right now. I'm scribbling out the pavement. I'm retyping <laughs> it. The fucking asshole. There we go. Um, but that's not to say it's, not a, it's a bad story. It's it's just it's just an odd one. Again, it's a bit of a curveball, right? But it's you know what's interesting about this book and especially the next one is there are stories like this that I think speak to different elements of, um. Yeah, I mean, I have different characters, personalities, but but I do think that like women sometimes are able to write conflicted or or difficult women better than a man could. I feel like, and this is a good a good example where if this had been written by a man, you might be like, oh, you know, it's it maybe seems a bit sexist or whatever. But it, you right. know, written by a right. woman, you're like you're like, okay, no, this seems like a. I wonder if there's a woman like this in her life, and she was like, I'm going to 
yeah, well, put her in a story. There's, there's no burden of proof on a woman to write a female character who yeah. uh, is, you know, if, if a man writes a, 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 a kind of a battle axe, very unsat uh, unsympathetic female, then, it, then he'll always be accused of misogyny, right? Mm -hmm. Whereas a woman can get away with it. So, yes, yeah. yeah. Um, um. So, from the abyss. <laughs> yeah, this is another weird one. Nineteen forty, um, I believe this one. Doppelganger story. Hmm. I this one was a little bit. I mean, you know, sometimes when you get a bad horror film that doesn't follow its own rules or makes up right. rules halfway through, so you can't buy into the, you can't yeah, buy into it because. So with this, uh, but I'm not sure if it's the story's fault or my fault, or, but I couldn't quite get a handle on, I I wasn't quite sure how the mechanics of this haunting or whatever it was worked. Could you figure out what it was? No, it, it just seemed as though this woman went off a cliff in a car and some aspect of her crawled back out of the abyss and another aspect of her was left down there for, you know, reasons we don't understand or can't fully explain and 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 they were almost hot and cold. It was like she'd been split into these two yeah. versions of herself. But one, I couldn't, one. But what I mean is, with this kind of thing, you always have to appropriate out, like, there has to be, an, the, the mathematics has to end, add up for me, usually, anyway. So I, I understand there's, a, there's the one woman over here with this aspect of it, but where did the other dual personality where did they find the body to in like what was the rule there like how did that manifest I've, itself physically I, I that i don't understand no, I, I have no idea yeah it was uh yeah but do you do you do you think that i mean it's not poor writing because it's a where they're all really well written mm. stories. but do you think that's like a poor story yeah, that's, or do you think that's the, our problem the muddiest no i mean i for me it was the muddiest it's the muddiest story yet, for the same reason. I couldn't like the 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 yeah the logistics didn't really make sense, right? Um, but but that's my point. Do you think do you think we are expecting sense where that wasn't the intention? Do you think maybe we're approaching it wrong? I mean, because it's not a it's not a boring story, and it's no, not no, no. a written story, and 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 it's I didn't I I wasn't angry at the end. I wasn't like ah damn you right. story. I was just ah. But and I'm wondering almost, if it's a my problem rather than the writer's problem. No, I suppose you could almost take it more as like a, if you take it as a magical realism story as opposed to a a horror story, you can kind right. of give more latitude to just the weird and just be like, okay, sure, in this world. That's interesting. Uh, in yes. This story. It's possible yeah, I think that's the thing, person. isn't it? I think that's the thing is in a way it's, 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 um, if they if they'd excised the stuff at the beginning about talking about split personality disorder, right? And if it was just a story, yeah, about some kind of weird doppelganger who crawled out of, then maybe I wouldn't have so much of a problem. Yeah, with... but it's certainly not one of the best stories in the collection. No, anyway. no. agreed, agreed. Um, and then and we uh, have uh, from yeah. circa nineteen forty five, apparently. So I'm guessing they're not quite don't have a solid we have in a way the most prosaic kind of yes this felt like a 50s monster movie or something with none of the i mean classily written but with yes. none of the weird the ones, cerebral the world, ethereal stuff of the other stories right except that what, what i what was unclear to me and i deliberately left unclear was was again the mechanics like is this a time slip is this a hallucination right. is this a, is this the actual survival of a long ex extinct species like the story kind of suggests all of these things and never actually commits for the reader to what right. which of these various options is happening i'm wondering if there's a clue in the title which i confess i don't understand why this is called the taste of pomegranates, the pomegranates uh, yeah so I'm wondering if there's a clue in there, like if we were smart. Well, my dad, we were... my oh. dad hates pomegranates. There we go. Uh, <laughs> and I'll but I'll explain why. Okay. My dad thinks pomegranates are an enormous amount of work for very poor taste payoff for a very insipid kind of like, and then there's even a little bitty, 
you know, uh, th- yeah, he's just he's just like, no, this is not worth the effort, not worth the time for what right. little payoff I'm you're getting work, from this. Food. You're gonna work for your way too hard for too yeah. little. It's yeah. not like a pistachio nut where there's a there's just a satisfyingly small or, physical labor and then reward a taste explosion. Yeah, I love pistachios. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, pistachio ice cream is excellent oh. as well. They've got a nice, they just recently released in the 7 Eleven. Yes, there's a nice um, yeah, green tea and pistachio lollipop. Ooh. If only I yeah, could yeah, make yeah. it to you without it melting, then. Uh... <laughs> um, so, yes, uh, this this was again not not my one of my favorites of no. the whole. Again, the whole not piece. bad, but but it did seem like out of another, like a, a much more bog standard horror. You know what's interesting? Like, uh, Yes, it vaguely reminded me of like certain 1970s, like Tom Baker era Doctor Who that got into this kind of like rural horror, like the those one the stones and this one about these these anyway, right? And again, had these time the slips. Oh my like, the Fong Choi or something like that. That's the one. Yes, that's right. the one. Um, <laughs> yeah, a lot of people in in Asian makeup. It was a little awkward, <laughs> um, but. Uh, but yeah, anyway, uh, this is it's it, in a way it seemed it seemed very. The other stories didn't necessarily seem like, although they were British, there were a lot of them were set in or they were about English people. But that one, more than anything else, really felt to me like that's an English, English story. I don't know why. Even though it's set in France, and we should mention as well yeah. something uh, I didn't actually realize. That, it's funny. It's weird that this didn't jump out at me while reading through the stories. This didn't occur to me at all. And then when you go to the glossary. And you look up how many French words are. Oh, yeah. You realize, oh, holy shit. There's a lot of France in this. Like, she's clear. Yes. Like, she spent time in France during the the war, I think. There's some kind of right. edict or something. Um, there's a lot of love. Yeah. France, she seems a bit French. Frank- Frank- yeah. Pretty, yeah, for but sure. Did that, did that um, oddly? Because for me, I have to, it didn't come through to me while reading the stories. It, it's very subtle. And then it. I only noticed when I looked at the glossary how many French words were in the glossary. Or did it well, just look at you more clearly? It did, and I'll, and I'll tell you why. Oh, I, I, I could have, if I hadn't just switched books, I'll go back. Um, when you read it in the form that I read it in, um, the glossary is highlighted. It's it's actually a bit distracting because the, the suddenly you get these like... Um, ah, you mean in the text? Blue, you have these big blue hypertext right. links. Right, so, right, right. So the thing is, I didn't have to stop and be like, well, I don't know that French word, so I'll skip it and not worry about it right now. I would immediately click on it uh, to find right. out what that French word meant. And I started realizing I'm clicking on a lot of French words here. And then multiple of the stories, the early ones, are set in France. Yes. Oh, there like we the go. First. So your format kind yeah. of slightly changed Medley. reading. Uh, oh, yeah, a little bit. Yeah. I, so uh, I was able to follow up on the notes immediately as I was reading the stories if I needed to. Interesting. Um, so there we go. That's From the Abyss by Dickie Broster. I think this is a really nice addition to anyone's library of um, horror stories. And, and weird, and, weird yeah. supernatural. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah, 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 yeah. Spooky stuff for Halloween or any yes. time of year, in fact. Mm. Um, um, yeah. So. Okay, cracking uh, on to the villa the and the vortex. Elena Mordant. So we might come up a bit short here because, like I said, I've highlighted the stories that I like yeah, and then kind of skipped over some of the ones that were somewhat less interesting, thinking you might pick up the slack. But um, you haven't read the last three. The last three. And yeah. I haven't made much notes on the last three, even though one of them is kind of interesting. So so this is a slightly compromised um, review this time. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Although I will say right now that I intend to finish this this weekend because I've been enjoying all of the stories in this right. book. Um, so there, there's no question that I won't. So to anyone who wants to read the book, um, I'm giving yes. it, or before we even talk about it, I'm going to give it my thumbs up. Yes, I, but, but if the, anyone is disappointed and if there's any hate mail, uh, send it to Nick <laughs> at lazymick.com. Uh, mm-hmm. Yes, yes, and, yes. Uh, yeah. He won't read it because he's too lazy. Exactly. Um, I can't so, be bothered with all that. He's too busy walking around with a with a pig under his arm and a piece right. of hay out of his mouth, trying to steal your ladder. Or I heard a great story actually. Just just 
to stick with the Irish stereotypes for a moment, I had a great story from my brother-in-law who was from County Carlo about, uh, uh, I don't know where this, where this happened. It happened somewhere to somebody he knows in Ireland. Um, some of the, some locals came by and said, uh, oh, we see you don't have a driveway there. You know, would you like to, like we could put one in for you. And he was like, well, you know, if you can do me a good deal. So they figured it all out. And he, he had a driveway that went in, I'm assuming overnight. Um, because three days later, the police came to his house and were like, yeah, so your driveway is stolen uh, from like two roads down. Uh, yeah. Wow. So these. Yeah, that's fantastic. They had like lifted paving slabs. That's balls. <laughs> from yeah, one they house. don't go that far away or go no. to town. Yeah, just, yeah, no, just uh, just literally the same as Your man down there hasn't got a driveway, I know. <laughs> yeah, genius. Anyway, um, wow, so that's, some... a, that's a that's a particularly Irish crime as well. Isn't it? Like, <laughs> yeah, stolen driveway. I don't even know how you steal a driveway. Like, <laughs> you just lit off was a thing. <laughs> yeah, yes, uh, yeah. Anyway, brilliant. Um, so, so Eleanor, right? Eleanor Mordant mm. or Mordaunt? Okay, the villa and the vortex. Uh, yeah. Was there anything to say about her before we get into the story? Well, she, she seems to have led a much more event, or at least that we know. DK Bros Broster was a bit more um, right, a reckless. Uh, um, yeah. yeah, but Eleanor Mordaunt seems to have been, uh, you know, born 1972, led an eventful life, widowed at an early age, travelled around the world by herself at a time that you know women just didn't do that right mm -hmm. and um and also she seems to have i mean again dk prost and we mentioned she had these revered uh jacobite novels and then she did these other short stories and mm -hmm. Ellen Gordon seems to have been even more um uh wrote more widely right like she wrote a whole bunch of things i i noted this I, again this is one of those things like one of those weird literary spats which i wish i was actually more well read to mm -hmm. understand, but apparently Somerset Moore um, wrote some book uh, with a couple of characters, which you know, it, again, if you're well read enough, well, clearly, uh, you know, mm -hmm. owning Thomas Hardy and Hugh Walpole, and I was thinking, I would know if I <laughs> yes. read a book that I wish I did. I wish I was that you know clued in, but no. Nope. And apparently, mm -hmm. he did, and then she. She uh, she wrote a novel, a repost, right? To, to oh. his, uh, la yeah. So I was thinking, ah, oh, that's kind of a thing. Like, if I had enough time, mm -hmm. you know, I'd actually like to read all those books and, Cute, and see if I could books, understand. Yeah, yeah. yeah, see if I could understand it. Uh, you know. But apparently, if you were, you know, well read enough, you know, in the early nineteenth century, I guess, mm -hmm. then also, if you, this if you might have been you. And if you floated in those circles as well, I think, you know, like you're more likely to recognize a, a parody of somebody you know than you are. So, yeah, I mean, it's, it does seem like, um, like just from from reading the books, like it's, yeah, they, they you know. Plus as well, it, writer... wouldn't, it wouldn't be like the hyperbole of nowadays, you know, where someone just says something slightly dismissive and then the Twitter is like, such and such slams someone else. Yes. Like, it would have been, yes. it would have been something along the lines of, a thinly veiled character in this yes. and 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 he drops the jam from his scone on his trousers and yes right. that's just what thomas hardy does if you've ever had tea with him he's a yes. terrible scone eater or something you know? <laughs> and that would be a slap in the face right that would oh, be uh... yes yes they wouldn't people wouldn't speak for 20 years <laughs> um so uh so yeah what's interesting to me about these stories um mm. is i think they're more they are more nuanced i think they're more psychologically nuanced um than the stories in the other book I, which i enjoyed a lot but these stories in almost every way seem more more highly polished more highly finished to me they they're certainly a lot more melancholy I think yes, yes, sad. truly sad. Like if we were going to make the analogy again, I think the DK Broster, she's got a really good. I, again, I, I agree. I, I I really enjoyed. So, but she's got a, a um, she seems to have a bit more of a handle on. She she does she does have that melancholy, and she does she does 
bring that kind of um uh, what's the word i'm looking for that that kind of existential angst but packaged mm -hmm. in nice little kind of yes. two gut punch kind of stories when yes. she needs to right yes whereas these feel a lot more like lugubrious they're, they're yeah, definitely just, they're longer think, stories for one thing yeah yeah and um but that so you know the first actually the first story right out of the gate i was like okay the, I, for me it, it ticked a few boxes it ticked yeah. a few boxes for me one of which is interesting enough as a small child I Sorry, had just, a recurring... just carry on. this is called the weakening yeah. point it's from the weakening point yeah yeah, yeah. So as a, as a child, I had a recurring nightmare, but I particularly remember from one experience uh, because the night that I had it, my parents had gone out. Uh, was it a nightmare that someone was stolen your driveway and installed yeah. it three doors down? It was. It was. Um, and so my granddad was home. And so I was probably six years old or something like that. And I woke up like in a full bore panic and, and went to my mom and dad's room and they weren't there. The mm. bed was empty and I was like, holy shit. And then I went to my granddad. My granddad lived with us, uh, went to his room and he was there, not asleep yet. And so he talked me down. But the dream was of a very, very long corridor oh, with oh. some ghostly apparition at the far oh, end. Right. That, yeah, or almost not moving, but just there. And I sensed this incredible malign presence, this absolute right. feeling of whatever this thing was, it did want, it well, wanted nothing good for me. That sound that sounds um, similar to what the Japanese call uh, kanashibari, right? Um, okay, is sleep paralysis, right? Yes, which yes. is something I have experienced. I haven't had it for a while now. I have to admit, but I used to have it infrequently. I would have, and if anyone's never had any form of sleep paralysis, and and it can happen with your eyes wide open or with your eyes closed, and it's difficult to explain because you're very aware of your surroundings unlike a dream you're not necessarily in another place you're exactly where you are like in your bed or on your foot or whatever and which is what makes it so terrifying and i can't remember how it, it's something to do with is it your 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 body's tired and your brain isn't or something like that and right. and you're stuck sometimes you see it uh, one time i saw it i actually saw the classic creepy little old lady the far side of the room slowly getting closer Mm -hmm. fucking, I, I mean, I'm glad I've had them because they're like awesome little horror movies. They're like, yeah, uh, yeah. Right. And other times it's just a feeling, like you said, a presence, like you know something's coming to get you. Yeah. And you can't move. Yeah. And and what usually happens, the way it usually happens to me when I used to have them, would I would wake up with my wife shaking me awake. Yeah. Screaming. And what wow. I did was the only way I could break the spell. Yeah, yeah. But I couldn't move. I yes. had to go ah, for ages, and then suddenly it would burst through, like, ah! and of course my <laughs> poor wife would, what the <laughs> hell is that? And then would come over and wake me up because she realised I was having some kind of sleep paralysis nightmare. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so have you ever seen that painting by um by Henry Fuseli? Uh, the oh, yes, one with the goblin, the little goblin yes, sitting yeah, on the ladies. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's I think that is inspired by Sleep Paralysis. It is. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yeah. It's his famous painting. We're getting it's great, Beardsley, Fuseli. You know, we're we're really cranking oh, out the, We uh, should start we... um artistic as feck. Uh... <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um so anyway, uh how learned so we are. One day we'll oh, be able to spot literary feuds. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> um so yeah, this story's a real slow burn, right? And it's really yeah. interesting to me that it's basically about a, a, a a child who's born and on his birthday each year has an absolutely terrifying experience of this kind of sleep paralysis, this nightmare. It's recurring, but over time it seems as though, and it is similar to the, the, the yeah, nightmare it is. I described. It, it is, is scary. A it's a scary dream as well, right? It's oh, yeah. yeah, it's the same as yours in so much as it's, but rather than a, a straight corridor, it's like there's a number of rooms between yes. him and whatever is coming to get and. Each year, when he gets the dream again, it's one it's room closer, right? Closer, yeah. Yeah, which is then, terrifying. Yes, um, yeah. And then he, basically at the beginning, he tries to find all kinds of ways of dealing with it. And, and you know, he skips it, like he stays up all night one year. and But eventually he gets so rattled by it. Um, and even as a child, like he has these terrible, like days and days he'll be exhausted and, and yeah. all it takes messed up. It takes a while to recover, right, from... Yeah. 
And then as he gets older, he kind of needs to, you know, he starts to, he does drugs, he does, he drinks, he does whatever he can to just cope. And he, he kind of falls apart. He's not able to finish his schooling. He's, you know, he kind of becomes a bit of a, a wastrel. Um, well, it destroys and, his life, really, doesn't it? Yeah. And yeah, at, to the point where he starts to long for death and he starts to see this thing as his approaching doom and it stops trying to escape it, right? And eventually creates it with open arms. Yeah, um, well, it's, 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 you wonder as well how much of it is a self-fulfilling prophecy and how much of it is a, a real thing out to get him or and, and it works on all these levels. And yeah, the ending the as 27 well. 27 interested me as well, that it that it's, it's like there's 27 doors or whatever that like 27 right. is that's that year right <laughs> where yeah, well, tons has, of famous people die he, he has the inevitability of it as well like it's a very but but also the end is kind of bittersweet as well right because it seems as if maybe oh well that's probably how it should have gone down mm -hmm. or no it's a yes it's great it's a great story and, yeah. and like you said yeah it's 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 got that melancholy and that yearning and and that mm, that's something intangible that makes you wondering in in a different way, but in the same way as the first time you read a Lovecraft story, you go down the bottom of the lawn and wander about all day, hoping you might find like a a doorway to a underground yeah. labyrinth. So. Yes, yeah. But I'll tell you the other thing that struck me about this, and this is what strikes me then about the the later stories: is there's always yeah. another thing going on. Right. Um. So in this story, there's a friend that he makes when he's at college who is of poorer means. Like, so he's actually quite a rich kid, this guy with the, uh, the recurring nightmare. Um, and this friend kind of really tries to do him a solid at various points. And there's this element that comes through the story of where like nobody seems to really appreciate the sacrifices this poorer friend is making. Not right. this rich kid's parents, not this rich kid. And at the end of the story, you're kind of like, wow, yeah, sometimes rich people just don't notice or give a shit. <laughs> and that was something that I really appreciated. Like that was mm. it was something that didn't have to be in the story. But almost all these stories have something else to say in a very yes. subtle or interesting way. Right. And that was Yeah, because in know, a way all yeah, all yeah, this other guy's life isn't going very smoothly at all. But he's no. taking the time out. And then at the end of it you wonder like, well, what the fuck did I bother? Why yeah, for the suicidal rich kid get sucked into this fucking toff's life. Yeah, yeah, and his mom like so the, his mom's phone up all the time or whatever, you know, uh, calling however they call people up in these in the in the Dracula days. Um, right. And uh, you know, see a chafu's podcast for details. Um, yeah. So uh, yeah. Anyway, it's, it's, it's admirably class conscious. Uh, for this time period to, to to write something that kind of at least nods towards that, I thought. Right. And the next story is even more depressing. Well, I would also like to uh, the op I would like to quote its opening paragraph, if I may. Please so do. The countryside from 1917. Religion is an ordered superstition. In its modern forms, more particularly in that form taken by the English church, it has become so ordered, so barren, so free from imagination and emotion that it is like a plant which has been over pruned with no luxuriance of growth, with little beauty, circled by a high fence which may keep out evil, which does keep out light, utterly alien to that garden of roses and herbs, of peace, of perfume and splendour which it might be, which it sometimes has been, despite its many parasites, its over luxuriant growth and piercing thorns. So that had me on board straight away. Yes. But, yeah, wow, yeah. Fantastic. What a fantastic analogy. Um, yeah. A, a very nuanced one, be, like a different, a different route from the, you know, not, it's not the Richard Dawkins argument, right? Yeah. It's, it's, it's no. something else. It's something else. Yeah. It, it almost gets, it's a, a bit, oh, I'm, not, I'm on fire. William Blake. It gets to that kind of like ah, yeah, 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 magical, yeah. magical Christianity kind of idea, you know, that it should still have some mystery in it. Um, right. And I don't think we've ever um, talked about this oddly enough. But are, are you a William Blake enthusiast as well? Because I certainly am. Oh yeah, yeah. The the, the the poetry and the art, especially the art. Right, actually. right, right. Yeah, those um, weird plates he made. Uh, yeah, 
yeah, oh, yeah. one of those, yeah. Again, maybe we should choose a really good William Blake biography, maybe to talk about Latrius. Yeah, Hanger. I would love to. Yeah, yeah. Tiger, sure Tiger. I to choose from. Um, the trick would be finding a good one. I think maybe the like a uh, one really solid. One. Anyway, um, mm -hmm. one to think about. Um, the countryside is the next story, and this one, this one also just uh, just blew me away, actually. To be honest, um, it's 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 because it's it has the supernatural element that is or isn't real, mm -hmm. um, which I appreciated. But I just the sadness of this story of basically this uh, this couple, right? This uh, it, it, I think it was it was the whole thing where they lived in London together, and they, he's a parson, and she's kind of a parson's wife, and and she's not able to have kids, so they kind of spend all of their um, time and effort uh taking care of the you know <laughs> the london poor basically right and then so right. and she has these kind of... oh, a slight technical glitch there uh, please continue next i have no idea what i was saying you were saying um, about the, country. the countryside yeah um yes so th so this uh this person's wife kind of has a, a coterie of like you know uh, street girls that she kind of takes care of and and she is loved by them in their in their way right <laughs> um and then she well her husband is given the opportunity to move to the countryside which he's from the countryside and be a kind of a more of a country parson and live in a they're taking care of a manor house he does and so when they're living in the city they have this kind of very spartan life they're they're working hard and he has these ideas of being a writer and he's going to write this great book or whatever they move to the countryside and he very quickly becomes kind of florid and fat and hale and hearty and and not the kind of man that she had originally fallen in love with but she seems to be hung up or obsessively hung up with him and basically he starts to have you know um an affair and it all goes to hell uh, basically, yeah, but it's, and and, the, and it also taps into the whole uh, law about sin eating, right? Which is a fascinating um, topic. Um, which I don't know if I know much about. Can you? Uh... No, I can't because okay. I. Don't know. Right. <laughs> it's so fascinating. I couldn't even possibly. No, I mean it's <laughs> one of those things. I sh I I haven't had time to. It's one of those things that keeps coming up. Like I saw some film or something and I'm like oh I should look into that and it is fascinating mm. but then I never do and then I ne I forgot this time as well so okay. there I bring it up um, and then just let it drop like a <laughs> <laughs> but she has a way ultimately basically there's there's an old lady who initially she's repulsed by because she's kind of like a the town witch um, in a way right. and because she's this parson's wife she's very you know it's interesting. There's there's this running thing that comes up in a in a later story. This very similar situation where she writes these women characters who are, in some way, I I don't want to use that. The frigid, frigid is a very um, judgy word, so I I don't want to use that. But who are somehow like inaccessible, or they they're married to these men who are very base. I guess maybe right have mm -hmm. certain expectations of of what they want from a wife and these women are not meeting those expectations but still desperately in love with these men and these relationships end in kind of great tragedy um because the story the fountain has the same very much the same kind of um thing going on yeah there's definitely well let's skip ahead then to that thing because i really 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 like the fountain as well. <laughs> yeah from it's it's really... starts with a, a quote from the welsh poet taliesin um and um yeah again this is yeah again a kind of a, a, a curse uh kind of born in infidelity yeah. and yeah just just this thought of yeah just this i mean rising damp doesn't begin to kind of explain <laughs> yes there's, there's no leonard rossiter here to lighten the mood um, no no if it, if it was an 80s uh, you know, uh, power paper bracket would have been called the moistening. I the think. moistening, yes. <laughs> um, By what is it? Grant M. Smith. <laughs> that, yeah, that's the yes. one. Yes. Yeah. Or uh, Garth Marenghi. Uh, <laughs> yes. Yes. So, so 
the thing with this one as well, what's interesting about it to me is the way it plays, it's interesting, it's, it's one of those mood, this is difficult to get right, um, but it's one of those, it's so much a mood piece because immediately you know what's happening. Like, it's one of those, you're ahead, it's not that the writer, uh, the reader's ahead of the, uh, the, the writer's ahead of the reader, it's the opposite, right? But it's not supposed to be, mm -hmm. and, and when it, you know, when it, when the, when it flips at the end and, and like, it's kind of the, the mystery is solved, as it were, it's, it's, there's no mysteries being solved for us. We no. know what's going on throughout the whole thing, but it, and it's just, it's difficult to know how she's pulled it up, but it's just this description of this, yeah, this fucking extreme damp is just, <laughs> really gets into your bones. Right, as yeah, you're it. yeah. Yeah. Um, just, yeah, so yeah, it's a bit of a companion piece to the countryside, this one, I think. Yeah, yeah, I th they're very uh, on very similar themes, and they both, you know, although I guess the difference is one ends with the shock of, you know, um, somebody taking their life, and the other one, it happens quite a bit earlier in the story, and then it's the aftermath of, you know, the the haunting. Um, but yeah, no, it's, I, I, they were both... Great. Again, just very well drawn, very well drawn characters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I think, and, uh, and, and I, I really mm, go on. Go ahead. Oh, I really like Hodge. Um, I was going to say the vortex first, right? Is, oh um, yes, yes. The yeah. vortex is brilliant. Yes, it, yeah. Is, the, but this was slightly lesser one for me. It's still a good one, but it's just some of the other stuff is so strong. Um, this is a bit more of a neat kind of. Um, I don't know, almost like a. I didn't like the ending. I'll give it that. I, yeah, it's, it's, it, too, it's 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 too they they it's too tied up and it's it's no, nobody really yeah, actually died. It turns it into felt a like voodoo story or something right at the end. Like <laughs> yes, yeah, Which it would have benefited bad. from a bit from being slightly less, um, you know, prosaic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They, they put a pin in it, and also I think it's um. Yeah, I just think it should have it should have had more of an edge. It should have had a nastier ending. They all should have just descended into madness, right? And actually murdered and and whatever else assaulted each other. Um, but it was the idea though, the idea of a play or a piece of writing that's so unhinged or has been created by an unhinged mind, which unhinges others just by access to it, is a great idea. And it it yeah. it seemed it had this kind of Clive like wait, before he existed, but early Clive Barker or or, um... also, it reminded me of the early play version of what that novel Flickr does about movies. I can't remember if you read Flickr or not. It's the one about like the haunted film, basically. Or, yes, or yes, film yes, 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 exactly. That kind of vibe to it, right? Uh, which is a book yeah. I enjoy. Um, I suppose that what was that Masters of Horror that John Carpenter did? Was it called Cigarette mm -hmm. Burns? That was in the similar yes. kind of territory, right? Uh, but not as good. Um, yeah, there's something about that, the idea of art that's so <laughs> so unhinged or so, yeah, that just kind of reaches okay. out and literally sucks people in. Yeah, and... like a big, like I remember, you know, when I was a young, very young child before ever having seen it, like reading people's accounts of like they thought the exorcist was you know was actually an evil film there was actually evil mm. in it right yes uh, yes in the celluloid baked right yeah, in there which which crossed yeah. the threshold into the living world somehow and you know mm -hmm. yeah yeah no no i agree with you i'm a kind of a sucker for that kind of stuff as well it's a shame they didn't but but i wanted something a bit different from you know in comparison with the other stories yeah sure and I think I just wanted it to be nastier. I wasn't happy that it had that it contained it contained the madness, it contained the evil. And right. I prefer right. I prefer an ending that uncontains that stuff. Um You wanted the full on uh quit a mass yeah. kind of infects yeah. the world. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's exactly Halloween what I want. Free ending. Yes, the crazies, <laughs> you know. Uh, Give more days to Halloween, Halloween, Halloween. That's what I wanted. Right. Um so but Hodge. So you know what? Okay. So what yeah. was I the only person who, who at a certain point of the story started hearing that song from uh, "Mummy's Love," uh, the. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah. 
like it came through loud and clear at a certain <laughs> point when the sexy the like well, i shouldn't say sexy but sexed up uh you know piltdown this man or whatever the hell he was weird, weird so th this 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 <sighs> is like a mashup of like stig of the dump meets walkabout and mm -hmm. something more primal and because this is this is a this is a fucked up story. I mean, oh yes, everything it, about it from the beginning, from the very beginning, when it is these two, what like basically a brother and sister who are quite young at the beginning. It's not clear to me until later on when we realize that they're only supposed to be seven or eight at the beginning, who find they stumble upon this like piece of land that normally is covered by water or something. Like it's like a that even just that image of them kind yeah. of like finding it's, finding a thing that like and then they have to work like for ages to find it again. You know, it takes them like years, I think, to refine this place. It's, it's it's like it's like if imagine someone had written five children and eight, but in this version, all the kids' libidos go into overdrive and jealousy comes in, and they learn about things like, you know, um, yeah. I mean, it's it, yeah, it's it's someone coming to. Uh, in so many ways, sexual awakening, yeah, um, uh, jealousy, mm -hmm. um, also you know that balance between like, um, uh, the you know the 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 unsympathetic, unmerciless nature of nature itself. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah, yeah. And protectionism versus because it's just there's so much in this story. And it's mm -hmm. so deeply sad. Yes, and yes. Tragic, and this is a great little story. yeah, and it's, and and creepy in that same way that creepy. a mummy in that way that a mummy's love is creepy. <laughs> you know, and you could just imagine this having been made, um, like in the early seventies as yeah. a play for today. Yeah, something. Starring Jenny Agatha showing her pants throughout, like in Walkabout. <laughs> yes, yes. It, it's just everything's just rippling beneath the surface, and it's ah uh, no, I, I this might have been along with Weakening Point. This might have been my choice of this volume. I think I loved Hodge. Yes, I think so too. And uh, as as yeah, it's just it's great, and it's and in some ways it's somewhat more stripped down. It's got like three characters basically yeah, yeah brother sister and and the landscape what, is what, 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 and the la yeah and yeah. whatever it is they unearth you know this you know and it, i'd really i mean i would be surprised as well i again reading about ella de mordant i wasn't sure but this strikes me this has to be this has to be a story written by someone who has some experience of childhood in the countryside yes like an urban kid couldn't write this, I don't think. No. And that's not that's not so much to do with the descriptions of the, you know, anyone can kind of figure out how to do that. It's more this endless days of summer with yeah. no no parents around, like nothing. Yeah. yeah. And 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 a very grown up sense of childhood where yeah, I'd be very surprised to find out if Eleanor Mordant, yes, Hackney, actually grew up in Hackney and yes, yeah. didn't see a tree until she was 25 or something. No, I, yeah. I would be and surprised. The, there's also a, a, there's a, a magic and a romanticism in the countryside when, in your childhood. Like, you, there's just more, to use that Anna Green Gables term, more scope for imagination, right? You see, and especially growing up in, in, in rural Ireland or rural, rural Wales, like, you still have the ring forts and the fairy circles and the just the that sense of the ancient alongside the yeah, the but more or less modern. but also along with that, there's like a respect for this. It's not twee. If you grow up, it's not the countryside isn't twee. It's not all oh no sunsets and you respect no. the scariness of it. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. And the, the well, yeah. When, the I, when I say magic, pull you down or yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. When I say magic, I mean that like black well <laughs> that you find right. with the water at the bottom, but you're like, what the hell's down there? Or 
those yeah ditches that are just terrifying drowning traps and yeah i can remember actually as a kid um going down into this kind of ditch thing that was uh you know a bunch of trees we were on holidays and it kind of went right down and there was a big stone wall here and there was just like nothing between and once we were down there we were like holy shit we can't get out <laughs> right. there's no way that it was so steep and we kind of slid down the grass yeah that if we hadn't screamed and screamed and somebody hadn't heard us we would have yeah had to <laughs> you eat each there. other your skeleton yeah 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 yes yeah yeah um and there's no warning the so there's no one to put a sign nope. there saying don't go down yet no <laughs> yeah um yeah so anyway it's uh so and I'm i think almost, that's why i'm almost tempted i mean unless you have something i'm almost tempted to go out there on a high because you yep. have read the last three stories um four wallpapers is of interest and you probably got a flavor of it from the introduction Mm -hmm. basically how yeah it's a fascinating haunting story to do with these layered wall wa wallpaper um uh, and then luz i mean luz is i enjoyed that that's okay I, that's right, okay you I can speak to luz then if you, I, I mean i might skip the landlady fall away from the villa um okay. just because you haven't read them yes, and yeah. i didn't particularly have that much to say about and hodge is such a oh yeah yeah but, but 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 we can talk a bit about Luz if 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 you so desire to to wrap this up. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, it, it was. It's in some ways, it's the most like straight up horror story. Yes. In, yeah. in this book, like that, that it's the like it's got the, a proper monster in a way, right? Mm -hmm. Um, and the setting is really well. I mean, again, if there's anything that she does really really well, it's it's that atmosphere, like like the the damp. The just intense damp of the fountain, right? Um, or yeah. just that landscape, that kind of muddy, boggy feeling of Hodge. Um, right. And then in this case, it's this fog, it's this omnipresent, completely, you know, just obliterates everything. And so, it's and you know, amazing. Funny. I, I was wondering if you knew about this because it's something, again, it made me think. And again, I didn't look it up and I probably should have, but this is something I grew up not experiencing, but, but, but reading about is. In comics, they would refer to it as a real pea super, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it was obviously within living memory that these, particularly you'd hear about it in London, right? That these these yeah. incredibly dense fogs would, like like the people in the story, they literally can't see right in the front of the face. Yeah, so yeah. People are just wandering around in like, it's like they've gone into that, like the other, like in the insidious films or something, they've gone over to that other, like, Yes, dimension of nothing almost, right? Which is 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 kind of terrifying and and really well illustrated in this story. But do you have any sense? And I've never really looked at this up. But do you have any sense as to why why was that a very definite thing for a certain period of time? And why is it not anymore? Because you never hear of those pea supers descending on London or else in to the that UK. degree. No, oh, yes, Change. you know you're. Do you know you're right. No, I don't actually. Um, but, but you know what? There is a. I just go back to the. There's a note that I can click on that talks about the yellow fog. Did you read that note? Um, I probably did, but I, I I'm not okay. recalling it. Um. Okay. Uh, London's thick yellow. London's fog. fog. Okay, here we go. London's fogs were notorious, caused by particulates from burning coal. Mm. They only disappeared after the passing of the Clean Air Act in 1956. Oh, there we go then. Okay, that's that's a rather boring prosaic answer. I was expecting something more mysterious, but that could be it. Yeah. So we're doing a mix of, of the actual. I mean, there, obviously, there's still fogs, but then compounded with the intense particles. particles yeah. Particles, which again, think about the yellow cloud. I mean, it's not a fog, but the yellow cloud that comes in out of, you know, across China and then to Korea and Japan. Yeah, that's which, true. We still get that every was it March or something. There's yeah. like a, a thin layer of. Of yellow sand on the windscreen of our car hmm. every year, um, um, but um, but actually, I so once when I was up in um, in Nico, mm. Jen and I took a bus up into the kind of into a more mountainous area. And we we're going to do a hike, and we got out of the bus, and I couldn't see the corners of the parking lot. It was like we had gotten out in the twilight zone. Uh, there was nothing; right. you you could only see a, a, a meter or two in front of you. And it was like, holy shit, how are we going to go hiking? I can't, you know, and I mean, it did, it did kind of, it did, as you uh, walk, obviously, yeah. you know, a little more visible, but you're always still, 
is only a few meters in front on to either side right. of you. Right. Yeah. No. I've I have experienced some some fogs. Yeah. But 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 this just seems like yeah. It's just like a well yeah wall of cotton wool around you or something. And it's interesting because you it's a, it's amazing how infrequently in the story people just walk into each other. Like there's the occasional grazing or something. But yeah. There's no like people just boof, like smashing <laughs> right. each other, right? Which I'm getting, yeah, people I, I guess are listening out for footsteps and uh, but it's 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 interesting because it's something that I suppose we've lost now that we don't really mm -hmm. we don't really have a proper um we don't have a, a a memory to go to for this. So reading about it now is is quite fantastical. It's kind of difficult to get your yes. head around. Which actually but fits I, the story uh, in the last. I remember reading uh, a more like uh, a positive, I guess, view of this. Uh, I can't remember who who's where it was. I read it, but it was someone. <laughs> was it was it uh, was it big big coal? Oh, yeah, big coal monthly. I think it was. Yes. <laughs> Think um, of what we would lose <laughs> if we try to get zero clean air. Yes. Uh, no, it was it was a description from somebody growing up in the twenties or thirties in London and saying that it was like I was just saying about that idea of like the countryside gives you a certain scope for imagination. Yeah. Um, but that he said the one time you had that in the city was during those pea supers because in that moment anything could be out there and like the you know. A leaning telephone pole could be the mast of a pirate ship that was just, just out of sight. You know, like so he said, right. it allowed it allowed you to finally feel like this was something other than just the depressing brick, you know, facades of the street you lived on. But yes, yeah, a slight tangent, but just something that struck me as kind of interesting. There's a thing on YouTube. There's a video on YouTube of uh, of uh, Kim Newman talking about. Um, which one is he talking about? Is he talking about a study in terror or murder by decree? You know, okay. the, the two Sherlock Holmes versus Jack the Ripper. Mm -hmm. thing, you know, and he's just talking in general. And an interesting fact that he brings up, which I, I have found kind of quite interesting, and a, a very uh, specific Kim. This is what's great about Kim Newman is, uh, you know, you you have this idea of the the Jack the Ripper, you know, in the, you know, in the fog, you know, and all, mm -hmm. and apparently, you know. The, the, you know, 1888, and apparently that season was uh, unfavorably fine weather, <laughs> and there was <laughs> no fogs there. So the London streets didn't look anything like you imagine they, they do, do the in all those versions. Mm -hmm. of the I thought, ah, oh, that's 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 great. Uh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> um, but so in any case, this this uh, this is you know uh, this is a great example of where my own uh, biases. Mm. lead me to then be surprised in the middle, and whether or not the author intended that or not but for the first half of the story I was convinced it was a man I was convinced the main character was I don't know if that's given away in the first line or two but there's a right. point at which she, she, she says I was a woman and I was like wait a second I've been picturing you as a man the entire first half of this story it's interesting you mention that because that happens in more than a few of these stories actually Okay, that was for one. me as well a few of the stories, something happened at some point. Oh, oh, oh! I assumed that was either a woman or a man, and it switched. And I, to to the point where I was wondering, is this a deliberate thing that she's doing? Because it happened, but for you, it it only happened in this story. That was the only time it really, really jumped out because I okay. had such a. Clear image no, no, of I this, noticed it a few. Of this nervous story. man for the first half of the story. Some, I didn't have time, again, uh, poor reason, I didn't have time to go back and read it, but something was niggling at the back of my mind that didn't Melissa Edmondson maybe mention something about that in the introduction? Something about that being a thing in her stories? Okay. It, like yeah. a weird kind of, does that ring a bell with you at all that she... Y yeah, I think so. I mean, it, yeah. it, it, calls, it also calls to mind, because I, I, I enjoy that, I enjoy being surprised, and I enjoy being... <laughs> put on the back foot by my own assumptions. Um, uh, you but, know. but I don't think it's to do with, I, I know what you might be, it's, but I don't think it's necessarily to do with tapping into it, like, a, like so you you put the character as like a doctor or, or something like that. Yes, so yeah, yeah. I don't think it is that. It's something a bit more subtle than that. Um, yeah, potentially. There's, but there's a, there's a play there in any case. But yeah, it's not necessarily, right, what, right. What's, the, what's the Williford book uh, that ends with like, 
the uh, line, and you're like, oh, wait a second, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then you um, look back across all the interactions of the book up until that point. Is it the pickup artist or no? No, it's, it's not. Just, it's not jailbait. It's something. Is it just called pickup? Maybe pickup. Yeah, the pick. Yeah, pickup. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. 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 That's the one where, yeah, you suddenly go like, yeah, and it, yeah, that you, you have to read the whole story and again and the think. Entire, yeah. and then you, and then all of these interactions that the characters had up until then, you're like, oh, there's it's another it's a good, thing. It's a good I, book. I, 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 someone was talking about that book recently, and they were couched it in a way which is, they said like, oh, what a, what a boring book with only this twist ending that suddenly made it interesting. But I was no. like, no, I thoroughly enjoyed that book all the way through. That's completely and wrong. Then, and that twist ending just it, adds it, to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Um, they're wrong, whoever that was. Um, but in this case, anyway, so so then she is, yeah. And well, see, that's the thing. When I realized that it was a woman, it did raise the level of like frisson, however you say that word. Like there was an element of like, oh, it, it's a single woman out walking by herself in this terrifying fog, and she's being led by a man that maybe doesn't have her best interests at heart. It just the whole thing just kind of it just added an extra level of kind of ooh right. it kind of bumped right. it up again for me right. like I hope it's gonna be okay. Previously that be... you were like man up come on yeah, pull yourself pretty together much. pretty much and then oh you poor dear oh exactly. I hope you get out of this <laughs> yes yes right right <laughs> yes yeah no no I um, think in that story I again going from memory I think that that might be a deliberate ploy in that story for certain like. That right. they pull the rug from under you. Um, sorry, I don't mean to, you know, equate rugs with women. That would be terribly yes, <laughs> misogynist <laughs> thing to do. Mm -hmm. No, no, I was thinking more along the lines of rug munching. Yeah, I, I know. I, I was right, just okay. not gonna. I was, I was. You just, weren't gonna <laughs> dignify it. I love that you you went ahead and explained it anyway. Um, no, 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 because the other way one could be as someone is treated as the rug, right? Oh, and yes, was, yes. Um. Right. There's so many. It's a wide world of misogyny you can enjoy. <laughs> just, just, yes. just in carpet-based, you know. Yeah, um, yeah. You know, carpet-based yeah. analogies. Yeah. Yeah. Um. So, so in any case, yeah. It turns out she is being she is being led to, and because of course, in the in this terrible fog, she doesn't even know which way is north south. At one point, there's a great one where she's on a bridge and she's like, "Has he just like walked me?" Like turn me around and then continue to walk me in the same direction I was going in, right? Well, like, that's the interesting uh, thing as well, as I said, because it starts it starts as a story where you think it's somewhat, and again, this the gender thing might make the difference. Is you think it's a story about hubris and someone's um, uh, uh what's the word I'm looking for? Like, 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 um, totally irrational prejudice, kind of prejudice, and then yeah. this thing that he's frightened of is going to be it's the man who saves him, right? It's the yes. magical Negro. Yes. But then he's like, <laughs> he gets lost. He's like, oh, hang on. It's not that. He's like, oh, shit. I've got... And it's like that thing. You're like, oh, yeah. Blind people aren't endowed with magic powers, right? <laughs> yes, they can yeah. fuck up as go the wrong way as well. But then, of course, it turns out to be something else again. So, Even more sinister. Yeah. That, yes. So it's an yeah. Exa I'm not sure if it works exactly. It's an odd one, but it's... It's a fun read, but it's it's a yeah. it's a bit of a I, I'm not quite sure what this is supposed to be either, really. It's the um, most pulp it's the most pulpy one to me. It's the more it's the one I could see in a, in an issue of weird tales about like that because of the the mad scientist bent that it suddenly seems to take yeah. near the I, end, you know. I got as well. I don't know if this is just because of a blind person and the dark lies of London thing and all that as well. But I was a, a, I, I got a little bit of um uh, um, 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 Edgar Wallace vibe right. from it as well, yes. a little bit. Yeah. Um, but again, that just could be me just making, you know, connections based on locations and, and yes, yeah, time period. And, and by mad scientist in this case, I mean somebody with a clear mental illness because there's no, there doesn't seem to be any. I mean, although again, I guess it's le it is left open to whether or not his theories are actually something he's put into practice in the past and whether. Oh, right. but it seems more likely that he's just a madman. Um, right. right. Yeah. But anyway, yeah. Um, oh, you know, one final reveal could have turned out to be a mad woman. There you go. There you go. Um, In which case, you yeah. have great sympathy with the mental yes. illness. <laughs> yeah, uh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, so, so uh, well done, handheld press, I think. Yeah, absolutely. For putting Agreed. out. 
these yeah, two very yeah. entertaining yeah uh, and very uh just yeah, yeah a great great series of stories um yeah um i hope we've 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 done i i hope we've made someone want mm -hmm. to make them because but they are because they're definitely deserving of these authors are definitely deserving of being a little bit more well known yeah i think. agreed yeah um yeah and there we go and uh, that's our Halloween special done and dusted. Mm -hmm. Feel free to make a few more spooky noises if you so desire. Um. <laughs>